Welcome to the Mentis Podcast. Today I'm going to answer four of the most frequently asked questions from our investors. In the United States, investment opportunities are regulated by the Securities Exchange Commission, or the SEC, and they provide us with a definition of who can place capital in different securities underneath Regulation D. They qualify an accredited investor as an investor who has a net worth of a million dollars or more, excluding the value of their home, or as an individual who makes $200,000 a year, or a couple who makes $300,000 a year for the past two years and has a reasonable expectation of that continuing in the future. A sophisticated investor, however, only needs to have a sufficient knowledge or experience with the investment or business matter that they are evaluating so that they can safely place their capital. These definitions are important because there's different types of investment opportunities available in the market. At Mentis Capital, we specialize in commercial real estate investments, such as an apartment building. And when we raise capital from investors, we can choose to either offer a 506C or a 506B offering. A 506C offering is only available to accredited investors. And that means we're allowed to advertise the investment and work with people that are outside of our existing networks. In other cases, we might choose to keep the investment closer to home and only offer it to our existing network. That is called a 506B offering and we are allowed to bring in both accredited and sophisticated investors into those investment opportunities. In both cases, investors should fully understand what they're investing in and are encouraged to reach out to their trusted financial advisors during the decision-making process. Investor funds are pooled together to provide the equity or the down payment that is needed to purchase a new property. The costs that are associated with doing that transaction include but are not limited to the actual purchase price of the property, the legal or transaction cost, the acquisition or broker fees, the capital projects that are involved with the project, like renovating the project, and reserves. And in all cases, we invest alongside our investors with our own capital to ensure that our interests are aligned. Cash flow, depreciation, and appreciation. So first, as we operate the property and receive rents on a monthly basis from the tenants, we will first cover the debt service and the expenses associated with the property and the remaining capital we will distribute back to our investors, either through an ACH or a check on a monthly or quarterly basis. Second, investors in our projects will also receive their percentage share of the depreciation benefits to help offset their tax burdens at the end of the year. And third, we will actively work to increase the value of the property through forced appreciation by completing renovations, streamlining the operations, and increasing the net operating income, or the NOI. This results in a higher value of the property, which allows investors to receive a substantial profit when the property is sold or a cash out refinance is completed. All types of investments companies and individuals are subject to changes in the economy. So it's important when you're evaluating a commercial real estate investment to just take a step back and look at the fundamentals of the business decision that you were making. One, is there a supply and demand imbalance in the market? Do renters even want your product? Two, is the market growing? Is the local government making it a business friendly environment? Are new jobs being created? Are companies moving to the area? Three, do you have a conservative business plan with contingencies built in? Are you realistic with the rents that you can achieve, the renovations that you can complete, and the timeline that you can complete them in? Four, do you have a conservative debt structure associated with the property? Do you have a fixed interest rate or an interest rate cap? Five, who is operating the property and implementing the business plan? Do they have experience? Do they have significant skin in the game? These are the basic fundamentals that we want to be comfortable with when we are evaluating a deal. In other words, 
we want to make sure that we're protecting the downside so that if it comes, we're in a good position to weather the storm. And of course, the upside has a way of taking care of itself. These are just a few of the questions that I'm asked on a daily basis. If you want additional questions answered about real estate investing, let us know in the comments below or reach out to us directly on our website. We'll be answering these questions in future videos and look forward to seeing you there.